in my last video, I made this little holder for my e-reader and I've caused a bit of a stir with this project. After seeing me use my e-reader in this little thing, everyone wanted one. So I had to go and print some extra ones of these. And as a result of this project having circulated to a few different people, I've now got some really good feedback. And this is one of the cool things about developing any kind of project is you can start off with a minimum viable product like I did with this and get it in circulation to an audience of users. And then you can collect some feedback. And the feedback that I've had from this is it's not wide enough from here to here. The books are tipping over. The feedback I've got from everyone in my family that also wanted to use this is they want to be able to sit it down on the bed or the couch or wherever they might be lying down to read without it toppling over. And because this is not wide enough, I've been asked to improve my design. This is one of the great things about engineering is that it's an iterative process. To get started, done is better than perfect. But to keep improving is a part of the process. What I'm going to do today is I'm going to make some adjustments to this model. Then I will print another copy and get it out there for further testing to see what kind of feedback I get. All right, let's get on with it. I'm back in SolidWorks, of course. Open up my stabilizer project. There's my original prototype, all its former glory. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to actually expand this base. What I believe I should be able to do is get back into this sketch here and change the dimension. Now, I've got a dimension here of 90. I might set this up at 110 millimeters. And I'll exit the sketch. Now, let's see what happens. Bit of a slight problem is that this plane where much of the sketch is attached to is now not really in the right place. Anyway, see what I can do about that. Now, here's a cool thing you can do with SolidWorks. If you don't want to do the maths in your head, you can actually go into that little window there and say 110 millimeters divided by two and it will do the maths for you you can also enter different units and say you might be working with a cross of measurements in imperial and metric you might also be more familiar with one unit or another and prefer to enter your dimensions in what you know and have it automatically calculate the dimensions into the units that you've been asked to work with so, for instance, I could go in here and type in two inches. You can see there that it's automatically calculated. Two inches is 50.8 millimeters. Anyway, I'll change that back to 55. Click that tick. Let's see. Everything has broken. And this is where I could have made the intentions of my build more clear from the outset. By taking a more thoughtful process, I could actually have eliminated this kind of problem where I've got, you know, messy sketches and dimensions all over the place. This sketch here is not fully constrained because this line here is now moved. One, nope. Well, it'll be 0.5. I can't even remember my initial drawing. Okay, making it 0.5 seems to have fixed that sketch. So I'll exit that sketch now and let's see. We've still got errors, but my job has rebuilt. What you saw just then was evidence of how my intent should have been more clear when I started this project. And if my intent had been more clear, I probably could have made different constraints so that I could alter any dimension on the sketch and it won't break things. So it's always worth taking your intention into consideration before you start. By changing that dimension from 
0.5 to 0.45, I've been able to fix whatever was broken there. With that, I'll go ahead and click the tick. And now I have version 2 ready to 3D print. So I'll go and get that started now and get my second iteration into circulation so that I can collect more feedback on whether it's good enough or not. Okay, get that over into Cura, I'll slice it, then it's onto the 3D printer for testing. All right, I'm out here now and the 3D print has finished. You can see here my previously built GoPro mount has served me well. I can just slot that back out of the way. In terms of printing, this has been pretty good. The fact that this has stayed adhered to the bed here with no warps or delaminations is really good for a, a nice wide print considering the printer is actually out here in my garage with no heating. Looks like it's just a shade above 10 degrees in here. Given the less than ideal environment which the 3D printer is operating in is, is really good. So I'm going to break the support material out now. Look how easy that came out. I love this tree support option in Cura. This one's not been quite as kind. Little bits left over here. All right, so I've got V2 ready to test. I'm going to hand this version 2 first copy over for testing, and we'll see what kind of feedback I get. Until next time, see you later.